Hello, in this video we'll complete exercise 1 as listed here. So using the operations interface we'll be finding some objects that already exist in the limbs and then we'll be locating them via the API just using the web browser and seeing what they look like there. Let's get started. What I've done here is I'm already logged into the operations interface and I found some samples which already have some work done on them. So I can uh, view one of the samples here and I see its uh, genealogy. So, okay, we've got a sample here. We can see its name. One feature you might find quite useful here is the ability to copy the limbs ID, which is a unique ID to the clipboard. And now let's switch to a web browser. And from the main Clarity login page, we can access the API just by stripping out everything after the first slash and replacing that with API and v2. And it'll ask us to authenticate, so I'll put in my username and password. And at this point, I can copy and paste one of the links that it already gives to me, or I can just start uh, typing if I know what I'm doing. And so in this case, I'm looking for samples, and the one that I want, well, I already have the ID of it in the clipboard, so I can paste that in and hit enter. And now we're seeing the XML representation of that sample in the web browser. So we see its, uh, for example, its name, uh, when it was received, who submitted it, uh, and if we have any user-defined fields, they also will be listed. So that's what a sample looks like as far as the API is concerned in the limbs. So of course we're not just limited to looking at samples, we can look up uh, lots of other things. So let's go and look up an analyte. And what's an analyte? It's something, it's a, it's a sample derived from the initial s submitted sample. And uh, there's one here, which is, looks like it's located in a plate in position uh, A2. So we'll do the same trick. We'll copy its limbs ID to the clipboard. We'll switch back to the browser. And if we look at the list here, we don't see analytes. That's because analytes are really just a form of uh, artifact. So we'll find those under the artifacts. Artifacts. And then I will paste in the URI, or sorry, the limbs ID into the URI. And now we're seeing the XML representation of that analyte. So, for example, if we look at its location, we can see it's in position A2 on this container, 27451. Um, we get to see various other information, including what the initial sample was that it was derived from, and uh, any user-defined fields which are attached to that analyte. So, we're looking at artifacts of type analyte. There are other types of artifacts which map to result files. And in the same genealogy, if I switch back to the limbs, in this genealogy, I've got a result file that has been produced by a process. So let's go and see what that looks like as far as the API is concerned. So. Copy its limbs ID to the clipboard again. Switch back. We're already looking at artifacts, and as I say, a result file is just an artifact. So we can just type in its limbs ID. And now we see uh, the name of it matches what we have in the limbs, Excalibur, Excalibur driver file. We see that this type of artifact is a result file rather than an analyte and we see since this is a shared result file i.e. it's associated with multiple things we see 
the multiple things that it is attached to. And we can examine that further by actually looking at the process which created it. So switch back to limbs. Here's the process which created it. From the genealogy, we know that it took in this plate and we ran this process on it. And one of the outputs was the driver file or the result file that we just looked at. So let's go and look at this process. Copy to limbs ID, switch back to the browser. This time we want to be looking not under artifacts but under processes. Put in our limbs ID. And now we've got quite a lot of XML which represents that process. Processes are the sort of core of tracking things in the limbs and there'll be separate videos and sessions related to those. But at this stage at least we wanted to look at the XML definition of this process. So it has things at the beginning such as who the technician was, when it was run, etc. Then the middle of the XML is made up of these input output maps which relate the inputs to the outputs and we'll be dealing with those in a subsequent session. And then at the end, we have any process level user-defined fields that are associated. So in this case, I've got six or seven here, um, which relates to the process that was run. So relatively straightforward, in essence, if I want to look at the XML representation of something, I can find it first of all in the limbs, right click, copy it to limbs ID to the clipboard, and then go to the web browser and find it under the correct resource. So if it's a sample, obviously I put sample. If it's a analyte or an artif an analyte or a result file, I'd put artifacts for processes, I put processes, etc. So it's fairly easy to do, and uh, although this is read-only mode, uh, it is quite useful for sort of checking and exploring the, the API and how the relationships work.